What is going on guys, Chris here, and hope you're having a fantastic day so far. I am, so um, I might as well do this video as it was due a few days before. But uh, pretty much I'm going to be showing off my Battlefield 5 settings here, because why not? Uh, and this is on the PlayStation, even though I play on Xbox a lot, but I played on PlayStation when this game first came out, so I might as well do it on here. And also, a little disclaimer, there really is no best settings. For any video game like it may seem like there is but it all comes down to your personal preference like sensitivities dead zones striking like mini map size you know all of that stuff pretty much all right so getting into controls here i play on a 40 sensitivity um personally i played on a 30 sensitivity when the game first came out then i increased it to 35 and then i increased it to 40 last year um and pretty much, I would recommend starting off with a 30 sensitivity if you're new or an experienced player. Around like maybe 30 to 50%, I'd say just get used to one sensitivity and then once you're used to that, just uh, increase it by like 5% every time. Uh, so for soldier zoom aim sensitivity, I keep this at the default 100 since it works for me. Um, if it doesn't, I also tried 50%, which makes it kind of like Call of Duty, but it's way slower as hell, so you may want to increase that to maybe like 60 or 70, personally, depending on your choice. Alright, so, Soldier Sprint Toggle, I have this off. I have double, temp double Tap to Sprint Slide, since that's helpful. Soldier Weapon Zoom Hold, Steady Scope Hold, Request to Hold, and Soldier Leaning, even though I don't use this, I put it to hold because why not uh control schemes this is pretty much where you know we're starting to get into the big stuff here <laughs> now you guys may know that i actually have a scuff but i've been using my dual shock for a couple of weeks now because i miss it <laughs> so um pretty much the first thing i did was swap the triggers um pretty much here we go fire and aim pretty much these are set to the triggers on playstation i set them to r1 and l1 and then the spotting and grenade button, as you can see R2, that's for ping. And down here, yep, here it is, throw grenade is L2. So definitely recommend it, especially if you're on PlayStation. Um, for Xbox, I recommend just keeping it with the normal triggers because it feels weird as hell with just the bumpers. But I guess if you want to go that way, go that way. <laughs> Alright, so the next uh, button layout that I actually like is the tactical layout and if you don't if you haven't played call of duty you may not know what this is but for people who have played call of duty and know what tactical is pretty much i switched the crouch and the sprint slide to my r3 or pretty much my right stick and i put the melee and bayonet charge to the circle button and pretty much it, it, this helps you so that you know you don't move your thumb off the stick and pretty much you can slide and stuff and move all over the place without having to take your thumb off the stick and leaving you at a disadvantage in gunfights. And also a little tip if you're into a high powered scope or if you just love sniping in general, um, put the steady scope to pretty much your aim button and pretty much like I said on PlayStation uh, I put it to L1 while on Xbox I put it to LT because you know that's my aiming button. Um, it'll make your scope more, I guess, smoother. Um, it'll reduce the sway on the sniper scopes because I hate that. And it definitely has helped me, even though I'm not the best sniper in the world. Uh, for events, I have the aiming left and right acceleration to zero. Pretty, pretty much what this means is when you move your stick, it's instant. Um, uh, as you can see, it says, you know, if you want stick without any acceleration, as it was in Battlefield 4, set to zero. But if you want it at full acceleration, like in Battlefield 1, where you have a slight delay, you can go with that too. But personally, zero is probably the best one, to be honest. Uniform Soldier Aiming, I have this on. It's a must-have on in any Battlefield game, to be honest, ever since Hardline. Uh, coefficient 133, this is default. I recommend you do not change this. Um, and pretty much... This is the soldier zoom aim sensitivity. Um, I recommend you don't change these. And uh, pretty much what I forgot to mention about universal soldier aiming is that it makes all the scopes the same pretty much in sensitivity wise. Like as you can see, they're all 100. And pretty much it won't mess your muscle memory up. So everything will feel the same. Everything will feel smoother. And yeah, 
but you can change these if you want to but i recommend keeping it at the default 100 and vertical aim ratio i have this at 48 percent and pretty much this uh, adjusts the ratio of horizontal and vertical to make it more even so you're not just swinging your scope all over the place so that's even in between onto controller tuning i have vibration off for reasons for the dead zone um i usually change it to 11 but like i did in battlefield 1 but i found that the just leaving a default is actually kind of better but i guess i could change it down to 11 um in battlefield 1 it really helped me so yeah i tried it on xbox as well and it's pretty good so uh, I just recommend turning these down to 11. Do not mess with these two because really, <laughs> I think you're going to mess your sticks up. And uh, here, the dead zones for L2 and R2, pretty much your triggers. Put them all down to 0 and 5% because pretty much when you click it, it's going to be instant. And it could help you in certain gunfights. Onto the gameplay section, I have Shell HUD on because it's important. A uh, HUD motion uh, on or off. Uh, I keep it on. Pretty much, it's like when, say when you jump or you like fall off a building. You know the HUD's just gonna like sway all over the place. Um, that doesn't really affect me. I had I, I actually had it off um, a few months ago, but turned it back on and really I kind of like it to be honest. Uh, player created content. Uh, I obviously have this on for uh, emblems, tags, platoon names, whatever. Um. Chat log, I have this on active because it, sometimes it gets really annoying when it's just popping up every time. And uh, I only have it on active whenever I need like ammo or medic, for example. So inventory, I only have that when active when I'm switching stuff. Uh, kill log, I have that to show all. I have that the icon and the name. And the score log weapon name, that's pretty much like in the middle of your screen when you see the player's name. Uh, awards show, vehicle C info show, pretty much all of these are like on pretty much. Um, share usage data, pretty much um, it's like in case your game crashes or experiencing problems, it sends that data to EA and DICE even though they'll do nothing about it. But I just have it on because why not. Overlay shadow strength, uh, pretty much this is kind of like um, pretty much a shadow behind the text you see on certain maps. It can help you in certain maps as well, like Fiel or Narvik, since it's like a, the snow is really white and also the text is white. So I, I put it to 100. Layout mirroring, I have this on. Uh, this I actually recommend turning this on because pretty much when you change a loadout, say on the United Kingdom side, it'll put that loadout on the German, US, and Japanese so that you won't have to go change them manually. Crosshair visibility, I have this one to 100. Uh, the crosshair color, I have this to, I guess, like some sort of yellowish color. I don't know, I'm colorblind. A little bit colorblind. But um, I have it to this yellowish type of color because I like to, see, I found it better to see what's actually in front of me, my enemy, for, ex for example. Um, reflex, night or sight glow, I have this to 100 since it's a nice balance between, you know, still kind of seeing that sight, but also seeing, you know, what's in front of you as well. And the sight color as well, I have this to yellow again because it's nice. <laughs> uh, Lati sight, I have this to like a grayish, pearlish type of color. I don't really use Lati sights because they're garbage. A hit indicator, obviously 100. I have this to a, I guess, purple color. Headshot color, I have this to a red color. Kill color, I have it to a green slash yellow color. Damage based shape, I have this on. Armor hit, yellow. Um, Minimap texture opacity, 100. Rotate with the view, I always have this on. Uh, where is that? On foot zoom radius, pretty much I have this to 150. Alright, so minimap size, I have this to 130. It's a nice balance between, you know, big and small so that I can still see it while also it's not distracting me as well. Uh, default icon, I have these all set to 90, except for this 80. Pretty much, um, I don't want all of these appearing on the screen at the same time in case I'm like hip firing or if I don't know that enemy's in front of me. So, pretty much, they're all the same. 
But ADS, though, is a different story. Um, objective icon, I have this to 0. Friendly soldier, I have this to 10. Enemy, I have it to 100, so I can see them clearly. Gadget icon, 0%. Uh, the danger ping, though, is at 80, so I know where my teammates pinged, like a tank or a LMG player, for example. <laughs> and uh, onto the advanced tab. The camera shake, I have this to 50%. I highly recommend you put this down because if you don't, your screen is going to be shaking a lot and you're not going to like it. Uh, soldier auto leaning, I have this on. Soldier peak over on. This is off because I hate how the parachute works in this game. Uh, context based warrior gaming, I have this on, on, on. And this. Um, I just left this at 100, the default when it first came into the game last year. But pretty much, I, I recommend that they, they remove this because this is not right, especially on console. It's going to give people a major advantage, especially low levels. Uh, reload hint show because sometimes I forget to reload. Hint system is hide because I don't need the game telling me tips every goddamn time. Uh, never performance, I have this on hide, but if you have shitty internet, then I recommend that you turn this on. Um, and onto audio here. Uh, master, I have this to 100, because I need to hear everything at any time. Music volume, 20%. Um, even though I love the music in this game, I have to turn it down because it's gonna distract me. Uh, output configuration, I have this to audio, even though I use Sennheiser headphones, but pretty much I found auto really just works the best. And uh, headphones, these are the best too, to be honest. Uh, I play with 3D headphones, they're just too, too loud. And war tapes, I pretty much recommend war tapes if you're playing through like TV speakers, for example. Uh, voice English on... I turn this one off, VoIP, because I don't talk in game chat, I only talk in parties, or just have my mic muted. Uh, subtitles on, and text as normal, because sometimes I can't really understand what the announcer is saying, pretty much. So, onto video here for our final category. Um, I have this to 80%, my brightness. Field of view is to 90, although I had it to 75 prior, but pretty much I had this to 90 because I also have this on. Um, pretty much with it off, it just zooms in pretty much to 55 field of view. While if you have this on, it'll pretty much zoom in with the same field of view that you actually have. As you can see, mine is 90. And it doesn't zoom in that much. And also, this is what many, I, get, I guess, pro players use, like Maxic, for example. That's how he has like no recoil. Uh, but it also depends on skill too, it's not going to make your gun no recoil, you still got to control that. Um, motion blur, I had this off because it's useless. Uh, same with this. Custom color settings, I have this on custom, but I found that like, Tritinopia is actually much better. Because as you can see, the enemies are more red, your squad is more green, the team is more blue. And stuff, so if you're having trouble, you know, with the normal setting then definitely go with Tritinopio. And also these, these are useless, turn them off because you do not need them unless you're taking a screenshot in game. Um, or if you're doing cinematic work, I don't know. Alright, so guys, there you go. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully this taught you something about what I use and how, you know, best settings aren't really best settings. Um, but if this helps some way, drop a like, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.